So today I've come out to do some painting at Dovedale. This is Thorpe Cloud, you can see behind me, this big pointy hill, it's a pretty famous local landscape. It's actually not too far from where I live, it's one of my favourite places to come and paint. It's pretty spectacular. It's a really lovely day today, it's a really nice spring day. Um, the sun's finally come out for once, the clouds are really interesting. So hopefully I'm going to have a good, uh, good session and uh, we'll have to see how it goes. So I've got a canvas here, it's uh, one I was working on previously and uh, I decided it wasn't really going anywhere so I just put a couple of coats of acrylic gesso over the top of it to uh, freshen it back up again, give it a nice clean surface to work on. But I quite like working over uh, half finished paintings sometimes because they give you a bit of an uneven surface. start uh, working on them again. There's already some marks there to, uh, to react to, to be working into. There's a really nice sense of um, light movement. I mean it's a little bit windy so the clouds are kind of moving over quite quickly and it's changing the shadows on the hills opposite. So I think it's going to be quite good fun. I just want to start by getting some marks down on the surface. Very much in the same sort of way as I do when I'm sketching. And in some ways I don't really like to think of painting and sketching as different activities. It's quite different when you're back in the studio outside I try and think of these uh, paintings as it's more involved sorts of sketches so that I don't get too bogged down in thinking about uh, making it all too pretty well there's much danger of that on in a painting I like to get some draw and marks into the into the surface. I think they add a lot in terms of movement, energy. I'm not really thinking of them so much in in terms of making a drawing to, to, to work into, but every time I see something out there it's quite good just to get a mark down. Just start looking at shapes and colours. I certainly wouldn't want to get too specific about exactly where everything is going to end up at this stage. I mean, I've only been doing it for a couple of minutes. I want to get the paint to flow on the surface, get some unexpected sorts of results. Treat each painting as a, an experiment. I think it would be incredibly boring if I knew exactly what was going to happen. I think if I, if I knew exactly what the painting was going to look like when it's finished, I don't think there'd be any point in doing it. I mean, at this point in the work, I, I want to keep it as open and expressive as possible. 
So as it goes on, I mean, I put things down. It's a nice thing about working with acrylic paint. Because it dries so quickly, especially when it, it's, it's, the sun's out and there's a bit of breeze blowing across it. These layers of paint will dry very quickly. It'll certainly become dry enough to be able to work over. That's one of the good things about acrylic is that you can build up layers of paint quite quickly. So you can put paint down knowing that in a few minutes time you can add another layer in without destroying what's underneath. I really like it when you get sort of, uh, sort of half revealed bits of paint underneath coming through. You get a real sense of the history of the marks that you're building up. You go, Away from the, the gessoed surface, this painted surface, and then scratching back through, and then layering back over again with some lighter paint, knowing that when that's dry, I'll be able to work into that again. I just keep adding and subtracting layers of paint as I go. Again, the great thing about using acrylic paint and uh, uh, working outside like this is that I can put these sort of textural marks down, these brush strokes, quite bold, knowing that in a few minutes they'll be dry enough to work over so I can keep the painting from getting stodgy and all the paint layers merging together and becoming all muddy. Working like this I can always get back to a fresh light underneath. I can work quite rapidly just kind of sk skipping the, skimming the, the brush over the surface rather than really pushing it hard onto the surface then I'm not picking up the layers of the colours underneath and so I'm kind of leaving half revealed bits here and there and it all adds to the giving the paint surface a lot of life and movement. I like to use these drawn marks is that they can indicate things that aren't visual, like the, the wind moving from left to right as I'm sitting here. 
and although these things are not necessarily really obvious when you're looking at a finished painting, I think the the sense of movement and the feeling of the landscape that's alive and not static comes across. And I think marks like this really help to add to that feeling. Earlier on I was saying about how I don't want the painting to be too uh, specific too early on. And so I think it's really important because it's changed quite a bit. Because the thing in front of me is changing. The light's changing, it's, the sun's gone in a bit, it's got a bit cloudier. And I think if you get too set too early on about exactly where things are going to be and what, what it's going to look like. You don't have the flexibility to just change something when you see it. parts of the painting which are starting to look all right at the moment but again I don't want to get um, to a point where I feel that I have to keep those bits and uh, frightened to to work over them um, and I think there's quite a lot of this bit of the painting here which is looking pretty boring and sludgy so although I just freshen it up sometimes it's quite nice to 
um, just throw something completely different in. And I might just put some pieces of collage uh, into the painting, just using some just ordinary um, drawing paper, just cartridge paper. Freshen up parts of the painting, just add another surface, different place to put a mark. it to keep alive and I want to work across this um, what I suppose you call the horizon and this area between what you think of as the sky part of the painting and the land part of the painting sometimes it's just nice to mess that up
here for quite a while now and I think the painting's got to a point where what I really need to do is take it back to the studio so I can have a really good look at it in the calm space and uh, see what I've got. Maybe it's okay, maybe I need to bring it out again and have another go at it. Um, maybe I just need to do a bit more work on it in the studio. I often find that I never really know what I've got until I get back. 